just from this we know you can't lose your salvation because it, it lists all these things that cannot separate you from the love of God, which is only available through salvation in Jesus Christ. And one of the things in the list is things to come. So if you get saved and then there's a sin that you're going to commit next week, that is a thing that is to come. Any sin you commit after you've been saved is something that is to come, something that will come in the future. And the Bible is clear that even that sin that is to come in your life that you will commit after being saved, that will not separate you from the love of Jesus Christ, which is exclusive to saved people. So. this video I want to talk about the new man in Romans 8 the new man in Romans 8 so Romans 8 is a great chapter talking about um, the condition of a person that's saved I think it's interesting it's in the book of Romans because it is the church of Rome that tries to steer people away from the book of Romans and get them messed up in James or somewhere like that uh, making them think that they have to do works for salvation rather than it being by grace through faith and, and uh, Christ having done all the work for us, we just received that and were saved. They steer people away from Romans. But here in Romans chapter 8, we uh, see some interesting verses on the condition of a person that has been saved and has been made a new creature, as a new man. And so we're going to start in verse number one. We're not going to read all the verses, but we'll just pick out some um, that I wanted to put into a video on this topic. So in Romans 8, in verse number one, it says, There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, <clears throat> who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. Now the thing that's interesting to note there is that in some of the newer Bibles, in modern Bibles, they have taken out the last part of verse 1. The 10 verses there towards the end, or I'm sorry, the 10 words at the end of that verse, who walk not after the flesh but after the Spirit, that has been removed in a lot of the new Bibles because they want to believe that once you're saved, you can't be condemned anymore. But that's not what it's saying. It's saying there's no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. That's where the new Bibles end. But it goes on to say, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. So you can be in Christ and walk after the flesh, but then there's condemnation that comes with that. And that's important because later on in this chapter, people try to pull out verses on their own and use them to say that you still have to do works to be saved, and if you don't do certain things to be saved, if you get into sin, you can lose your salvation. That's something that other cult-like denominations will teach. Uh, but what it's talking about is that you can be condemned in the physical realm here in your body, in this life, if you are a backslidden Christian. And so Romans 8.1 is speaking that there's no condemnation for a Christian that's not backslidden. Okay, um, now verse number 2 it says, For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death. Verse 3, For what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh, God sent in his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and for sin condemned sin in the flesh. Okay, so there it speaks of the law of the Spirit and the law of sin and the law of Death and the law of the Spirit is not some laws that you have to keep according to some church or some preacher, some denomination in order to keep your salvation or to get saved. Um, the law of the Spirit is dealing with the work of the Spirit, right? The work of the Spirit, which uh, has three functions really in a person's life when they're saved. They have the new birth. They're made a new creation, and so the Holy Spirit's involved in that transaction. Also, the baptism of the Holy Spirit that takes place 
and then spiritual circumcision, right? So when you're saved, your flesh is circumcised off from your soul so that when you sin, that sin uh, corrupts your flesh, but it doesn't corrupt your soul. Your soul stays sinless, connected with the Holy Spirit. When you die, the Holy Spirit and your soul go up and your body, which is condemned in a fallen sinful state, goes down to the ground uh, until the day of the resurrection, which we'll get to here in Romans 8 as well. But the law of the Spirit is not um, any Old Testament law keeping for salvation. Uh, it's not work salvation or maintaining or keeping salvation. And so you have to rightly divide what the law of the Spirit is and how it works. Now, verse number four says that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. So the righteousness of the law can be fulfilled in us if we don't walk after the flesh. We have to walk after the Spirit. Once again, dealing with a spiritual Christian versus a carnal or backslidden uh, Christian. And if you jump to verse 13, it says, For if ye live after the flesh, ye shall die. But if ye through the Spirit do mortify the deeds of the body, ye shall live. Okay, and so if you sin, even as a Christian, there will be consequences for the sin, and you can go to an early grave. Okay, a sin unto death, which is mentioned elsewhere in the scriptures, can happen. But if you go after the Spirit, then you'll uh, be blessed and live in the Christian life. It doesn't have to do with salvation. Now, in verse number uh, 6, or we'll read 5 and 6, says, For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the Spirit the things of the Spirit. Right? Serving God versus serving the flesh. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. And so you have the physical being spoken of once again there. Carnally minded will lead to your death physically, not eternal death. Um, but to be spiritually minded is to have life and peace in the life as a Christian here on earth. <clears throat> now, verse number seven says, Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. The carnal mind is the enemy. It's enmity with God and is not subject to the law of God. And so you run contrary to God's law and God's will in your life if you serve the flesh. And in order to avoid that, as a Christian, not a lost person or a person had frail, but as a Christian, you have to renew your mind. In the same book, Paul writes about that in Romans 12, verse 2. It says, And be not conformed to this world. How? But be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. And so he's telling people to renew their mind. It's something you have to do as a Christian in order to stay right with God and have the proper walk with God in the Christian life. You have to renew your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God to know and do the will of God in your life and have the peace in life spoken about instead of an early grave, an early death, as we're reading about there in Romans 8. Uh, in order to do that, you have to renew the mind. Otherwise, the mind naturally uh, becomes carnal. And in 1 Corinthians 2.16, we see in 1 Corinthians, whoops, that's 2 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians, which is right after Romans, 2.16, it says, For who hath known the mind of the Lord, that he may instruct him? Uh, because it talks about uh, he that is spiritual judges all things, yet he himself is judge of no man, in verse 15. But it says, but we have the mind of Christ. So as saved people, we have the mind of Christ. But you still have a brain in your body, in your flesh, that can take over and make you into a carnal Christian. So as the new man, as a new Christian, you've been saved, you have the spirit working in you, taking up residence inside of you, and the new man can cause you to have the right kind of thoughts that you ought to have as a Christian. But your brain in the flesh can have a, an effect that makes you carnally minded as a Christian. And that's what not renewing the mind will do. It'll allow the carnal. You're not renewing the mind of Christ, so then your fleshy brain takes over and you become a carnal Christian, which can lead to a uh, sin unto death if it is not corrected and you don't give in to the punishment and the uh, discipline of God as his child and he disciplines you and you don't respond appropriately to it, then there can be a sin unto death. And you can die as a result of not renewing the mind of Christ that you have. And then 
giving in to that fleshy carnal brain that you still have in the flesh. Then uh, verse number 13, which we read just before, it says, For if you live after the flesh, ye shall die. But if ye through the Spirit do mortify the deeds of the body, ye shall live. And so the thing I want to draw out from that is it says, If ye through the Spirit mortify the deeds of the flesh. So that can't possibly be talking to a lost person because a lost person doesn't have the Spirit to help them mortify the deeds of the flesh. And so in context, all of this here, these verses that people will try to use to, to teach that a person has to do works to be saved or can lose salvation if they don't do works, we see that that doesn't fit in with what verse 13 is saying. Verse 13 is saying, uh, you will die if you live after the flesh, but if you through the Spirit mortify the deeds of the flesh. So it's through the Spirit, and only saved people have the Spirit and are alive in the Spirit and quickened with the Spirit. Only saved people have that. So Paul's talking to a person who's already saved, already a new creature here in Romans chapter 8. And then if we back up to verse 11, we'll see that resurrection that I mentioned before. It says, but if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, right? So the spirit's dwelling in it. Once again, we see the spirit dwelling in a person. That's a condition that comes with being saved. We're not dealing with getting saved by works here. If the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies, carnal bodies, by his spirit that dwelleth in you. And so you will uh, be resurrected, right? And it's saying don't be a debtor to the flesh or live after the flesh because it's going to be raised by the spirit one day anyway. And so don't worry about the flesh. Uh, you need to be more concerned with the spiritual Things And so the saved will partake in the same resurrection that Jesus partook in because we have the same spirit dwelling in us. Once again, context deals with saved people. And then we're going to skip all the way to the end of the chapter to wrap up the video. All the way to the end, one other condition here from Romans 8 in regards to the new man in Christ. Uh, in verses 38 and 39, it says, For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. So that is a popular place to go to to prove eternal security. Because what it's basically saying is that nothing that's going to happen once you're saved can separate you from the love of God. I did an earlier video on God's hatred and that he has for sinners who are without Christ and commit wickedness. He's angry with the wicked every day. And it says that he hates all workers of iniquity. So... If you're going to have God's love, you have to be saved. You have to be in Christ. And once you're in Christ and you are in the love of God, nothing will be able to separate you from the love of God. And once again, here it says, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. If you want to be in God's love, you have to have Christ. Uh, you have to have Jesus. There is no love available to the sinner without Jesus. This idea of God loving sinners and only hating the sin, but loving the sinners is unbiblical. He hates sinners who are without Jesus Christ. If they accept his act of love towards them through Jesus Christ, then he will love them as his children, and nothing will be able to separate them from that. And in regards to eternal security, I just want to point out here that it says, nor things to come. And I don't hear too many preachers capitalizing on that when it comes to eternal security, but we know that you cannot lose your salvation just from this. Just from this, we know you can't lose your salvation because it, it lists all these things that cannot separate you from the love of God, which is only available through salvation in Jesus Christ. And one of the things in the list is things to come. So if you get saved and then there's a sin that you're going to commit next week, that is a thing that is to come. Any sin you commit after you've been saved is something that is to come, something that will come in the future. And the Bible is clear that even that sin that is to come in your life that you will commit after being saved, that will not separate you from the love of Jesus Christ, which is exclusive to saved people. So we see that there is for sure eternal security there in Romans 8, 38 and 39. So that wraps up uh, just the verses I wanted to look at dealing with uh, conditions of the new creature, the new man in Romans chapter 8.